By the year 2050, the escalating issue of sinking land poses an amplified risk for numerous coastal residents. Greetings to everyone. Today, we will be delving into a subject that revolves around a recent publication in the esteemed journal Nature. The study reveals a concerning trend, the increasing risk of flooding faced by numerous coastal residents in the United States due to sinking land, also known as subsidence. By combining measurements of subsidence obtained from satellites with projections of sea level rise and tide charts, the researchers have provided a comprehensive analysis of the potential for flooding in 32 cities situated along the Atlantic, Pacific and Gulf coasts. According to their findings, it is projected that within the next 30 years, up to half a million individuals could be affected by this issue, potentially resulting in damage to approximately one in every 35 privately owned properties. Additionally, the study sheds light on the demographic factors, such as race and socioeconomic status, that may further exacerbate the impact on those at risk. And now, without any further delay, let us commence our discussion on this matter. Nature has published a study that offers a fresh perspective on the risk of flooding in 32 cities situated on the Atlantic, Pacific and Gulf coasts. By integrating data on sinking land, sea level rise projections and tide charts obtained from satellites, the study presents a comprehensive analysis. According to the study, within the next 30 years, approximately 500,000 individuals could face the consequences of flooding, and there is a possibility that one in 35 privately owned properties may sustain damage. Additionally, the study brings attention to the racial and socioeconomic characteristics of those who could be impacted. Lead author Leonard Owenham, a graduate student collaborating with Associate Professor Manucha Shirzai at Virginia Tech's Earth Observation and Innovation Lab, acknowledges that communicating the issue of sea level rise and land subsidence can be challenging. The perception is often that it is a problem that will only have significant impacts at the end of the century, which may not resonate with many individuals. However, in this study, we have shifted the focus to the short term specifically looking at a time frame of just 26 years from now. There are additional projections in relation to the current augmentations, such as an expansion of flooded land by approximately 500 to 700 square miles. Moreover, the number of individuals impacted is anticipated to rise from 176,000 to 518,000. An additional 94,000 to 288,000 properties have been identified as being at risk, with an estimated value ranging from $32 billion to $109 billion. According to Shirzai, the primary objective of this paper is to provide factual information that can be used to make informed choices. It is mandatory for every city and county to have a flood resiliency plan, as per legal requirements. However, it is highly probable that no one has been presented with a complete overview until this study, which effectively presents the first all-encompassing depiction of what lies ahead in the near future. The study incorporates the contributions of various collaborators. According to Chandra Kanta Oha from the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Sonam Sherpa, a former PhD student at Virginia Tech and a postdoctoral scholar at Brown University, and Robert J. Nichols from the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research at the University of East Anglia in the United Kingdom. The findings of this study indicate that we now have the capability to accurately measure vertical land motion on a large scale. This breakthrough allows for the development of a valuable climate service that can aid in decision making and planning for flood prevention. Professor Nichols, an expert in climate adaptation, emphasizes that this approach can be implemented in any city worldwide, providing crucial support for adaptation efforts. By utilizing precise data collected by radar satellites in space, Shears Eye and his team of researchers have constructed detailed representations of the subsiding land along the entire United States coastline. Their groundbreaking efforts have unveiled areas along the Atlantic coast that are experiencing a significant sinking rate of up to 5 mm annually. According to Owen Hen, an analysis conducted on coastal cities found that more than two-thirds of them, specifically 24 out of 32, are currently experiencing a sinking rate of over 2 mm annually. 
Additionally, half of these cities have specific areas that are sinking at a faster rate than the global rise in sea levels. Although these measurements may appear insignificant on their own, when considered in conjunction with the gradual increase in sea levels over time, they contribute to a substantial and noteworthy transformation. He explained that he had discovered an analogy that effectively illustrates this transformation. Consider a sinking boat, he suggested. Picture yourself aboard this boat, which is gradually taking on water due to a small leak. This leak represents the rising sea levels and the resulting flooding. Now, imagine if it were to start raining. Even a light shower or drizzle would accelerate the sinking process beyond your initial expectations. This is precisely what happens with land subsidence. Even the slightest millimeter of downward movement intensifies the dangers already present along the coastline. In addition to the updated flood forecasts, the research also unveiled that a total of 131 flood control structures, including levees, berms and dikes, are present in the 32 cities examined. Remarkably, half of these structures are situated along the California coastline. Conversely, only three out of the 11 cities on the Atlantic coast have implemented levees or flood walls. According to Ohen Hen, there is a widespread lack of recognition for the importance of flood protection, especially along the Atlantic coast. In comparison to cities located on the Pacific or Gulf coasts, where as much as 70% of the city is safeguarded, the levees in the Atlantic region often provide protection for less than 10% of the area. In this study, a notable aspect is the inclusion of racial and socio-economic demographics as they relate to the areas that may be impacted. Certain cities, especially those located along the Gulf Coast, displayed a disproportionate impact on racial minorities when it came to the potential increase in exposure. Conversely, in other cities, the properties facing increased exposure tended to have lower values compared to the median property value in the area. In specific cities like New Orleans and Port Arthur, Texas, these two factors intersected, highlighting that areas with the highest potential risk were occupied by people of color who also faced economic disadvantages in comparison to the overall population of the city. Owen Hen expressed astonishment at this particular finding, he stated. In examining these areas, we discovered a clear disparity in terms of race and economic status. Historically, marginalized groups were disproportionately affected and the properties in these areas had significantly lower value compared to the rest of the city. This amplifies the potential consequences for these communities and hampers their ability to bounce back from severe flooding. According to Shi Tsai, the comprehensive study not only offers the most accurate depiction of potential flooding thus far, but also serves as a powerful call to action for policymakers in those regions. According to Shirzai, this study will eliminate any excuses from anyone who claims ignorance about land subsidence or other contributing factors, as it is common to hear such statements. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.